So I did a video the other day talking about the movies, the upcoming movies for the James Gunn era, and one of them is Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And it says it's the next solo film of Superman's cousin Kara Zor-El, a.k.a. Supergirl, based on Tom King's comic run of the same name. Um, and I'm a huge fan of Tom King, but I had not heard of this series. Maybe I did, and I just, for whatever reason, didn't pick it up. But uh, the series is, is done, and so they do have the uh, compilation here. Um, I like hardcover, but all they had was paperback. So what I was going to do was I was going to read through the whole thing and then discuss it, but I think there's actually enough material here. Um, I don't think I can talk about every issue, but I'm going to break this up into multiple videos. So when the story starts... Well, let me let me step back for a moment and just mention. Um, so on Comic Book Roundup, it's it's an aggregate site. It's like Rotten Tomatoes for comic books. Uh, this is it's it looks like there was just eight issues, and uh, so we start off with a seven point eight, which is not that great, and then it rises up to a nine point two. The average was eight point four. And uh, the uh, average user rating was 7.8. I generally find the, the user ratings to be more accurate than, um, than the professional reviewers. Uh, so 7.8 is not bad, but it's not fantastic. So when the story starts off, it's a little confusing as to where we are because it seems that we, we have a girl, a woman narrating the story about her father who had taken in some stranger named Krem, and uh, after a, a brief argument, Krem ends up stabbing him and killing him, and you can see he leaves the sword there, which apparently was a very nice sword. Um, so the the woman is, is a little bit perplexed as to why he would leave such a valuable sword here. Now, I will say that I think the writing is fantastic. I like the art. Um, but we get into some problems, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that because writing, there's a lot of different uh, aspects to writing. There's characterization, there's uh, uh, just dialogue, um, and there's plot. And I think the plot is the main problem here. So it's clearly not Earth. It seems to be some kind of a medieval level uh, uh, society but not Earth. So we get into here, and she's she's hunting for the man who killed her father because she wants to um, she wants to take revenge for the death of her father. And uh, I, I'm I'm not going to avoid spoilers, so just just know that. And uh, early on, she she mentions that that uh, they finally do meet Krem, and she she comes across Supergirl. They meet Krem and kill him. So we haven't even apparently gotten even close to that, but she's already kind of revealed the ending. Um, so she goes out and she's looking for to hire uh, maybe a bounty hunter or someone, and she comes across this this large fellow, and she offers the sword uh, after he has killed Krem, and the rather large fellow is just like. He's like, don't worry about it. I'll take care of him, and I'm going to take the sword too. And she says, give me the sword back until, uh, until you kill Krem. And he just backhands her. He says, don't worry. Uh, I'll take care of it, but I'm taking your sword. So he's going to leave, and he comes across another woman um, who is clearly drunk and uh, she's, she says, give, it, give the woman the sword back. And so they end up getting in a little bit of a fight. And uh, she does not seem to be the least bit concerned. And uh, she says in there a few times, it's my birthday. And so we could see in there it's revealing that she is Supergirl. And yet seems to be fighting like a regular person. And uh, so he, he hits her and she's bleeding. Um, and she says, mm, forgot the stupid red sun. <laughs> I don't know how she would forget that. So what it turns out is, is that Supergirl uh, wanted to celebrate her birthday by getting drunk. But because she's a Kryptonian, she can't do it on Earth. So she travels in a spaceship to a planet with a red sun and gets drunk 
in a bar in some medieval age, which seems... <laughs> She's supposed to be 21. Um, really silly. Really silly for, uh, for Supergirl. But um, despite the fact that she has no superpowers, she fairly easily take care, takes care of this uh, apparently seasoned fighter. And I don't like this stuff. And, and I, I've seen it before with, with Superman where he's depowered, but he's still like just a regular tough human being. And in my opinion, if a superpowered Kryptonian lost their powers, they would be completely uh, out of their element. And, um, but apparently not, even though she's 21 and drunk and completely depowered, she's still tough. Um, it reminds me of a story I read years and years and years ago, uh, with a character named Sportsmaster. If, if nobody knows who Sportsmaster is, uh, Sportsmaster is a non-powered supervillain, but, uh, and apparently he must be in other things because I see, he, I guess he's still being used. Um, Sportsmaster's He's one of these guys, he's kind of like Bullseye, except in, in his case, he's preternaturally uh, talented at every sport. So there he is on skis. And in one comic book, uh, one story, um, Green Lantern has to go against him in a series of sporting events uh, without his ring. And he beat Sportsmaster in every event. And it, I, even as a kid, I did not like that because I'm like, that's Sportsmaster's whole thing. With Green Lantern without his ring, I understand like Green Arrow because he doesn't have superpowers that he would have to train his body, but it 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 made it like Green Lantern didn't beat anybody because if if Sportsmaster can get beaten in every sporting event by a non-powered Green Lantern, then he's basically a joke. And I always feel that a hero is measured by the villains he defeats or the adversaries he defeats. And if you make Sportsmaster worthless, then who did he really beat? So anyway, she she hooks up with this woman. Uh, here she is. She's all hung over the next day because, again, she has no superpowers because she's under the red sun, which was her choice. Um, so the woman meets up with her again, and she's a little bit stunned because uh, given that it, they seem to be kind of a medieval level of technology, this spaceship is quite a bit... Uh, bizarre for her. She doesn't really understand what she's seeing. And uh, so they discuss for a while. She wants Supergirl to go with her to fight Krem. I mean, she's impressed that, that, that Supergirl was able to. She also thinks that Supergirl's wearing her underwear because her clothing is so odd. So Supergirl is there and all of a sudden, boom, she gets hit right in the chest with a an arrow. <laughs> and it buries itself in her chest. We also later learn that it was a poison arrow. And... Um, so there's there's Krem and there's the uh, that uh, other fellow, the bounty hunter, and now they're working together. And uh, so Crypto comes up, he gets uh, gets an arrow right in his neck, and then she gets she gets uh, let's see a total of three in her chest as she's bleeding, and she beats the two of them up. Okay, so Krem, despite the fact that he uh, looks like a very hardy, seasoned fighter, is left fleeing from the thrice-struck Supergirl, the 21-year-old Supergirl, and flees into her ship, and the ship takes off. And so he manages to get away as she is laying there on the ground with Crypto. So I guess maybe the question is, how did she not get... or, or how did she continue to... Uh, fight with three um, with three arrows in her chest, and um, I would say through the power of bad plotting, bad scripting, because uh, I, I have read further in here, and she just fights through it because she's that damn tough. Um, I think if you had an arrowhead buried, three arrowheads buried in your chest, uh, you'd be done. And you certainly a twenty-one year old girl is not going to be beating up two uh, significantly larger guys and um, I'm not loving the way he's handling Supergirl because she's kind of smug and uh, kind of stupid for traveling to a red red sun planet and uh, to get drunk 
on her birthday. And it's a little sad that she wants to spend birthday alone. Um, drunk. <laughs> so, uh, th this book got a 7.8 and, um, I'm not sure I would have even given it that. I tell you, the writing is very good. The, 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 the dialogue, um, her inner monologue is very good. And, and I was like, oh, this is quite good. And then we got even... All right, so she beats the one guy up. I'm like, okay. It was when this happened. And I'm like, is she partially... It's penetrating her theoretically. I mean, it's she's not. she generally has invulnerable skin, but not here. So I'm like, is she got some partial immunity? Because how is she not getting hurt? I mean, she's hurt. She's bleeding all over the place, but not so hurt that she can't just power through it. <laughs> Don't you know who I am? I'm Supergirl. Uh, yeah, okay. Actually, not really, since you're as tough as a regular human. Anyway, so uh, not the greatest start. I have continued reading it, and I'm going to tell you that it's not getting better. So anyway, that's Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow by Tom King from this 2021 and 22 or something like that.